Hey everybody, welcome back to another land place of binding wise gadget plus gotta been say uh, gotta been saying that's not how that expression works. Gotta say, I've been enjoying the random run so far. I forgot what it's like. Oh, if you random an Eden, I swear to god. That could have been fun actually, now that I think about it. 1x92, YQH4. I don't mind playing as the loss. We may lose, but I I've I've come to uh, separate. I have cleaved some of the compulsion I had to consider that the only enjoyable Isaac runs are wins. Now, if anything, the fact that, you know, we've had so many runs that in my opinion were just absolutely cursed beyond belief, there's a lot of negative that comes with that, but there's one big positive, which is I'm content to die on an Isaac run. As long as I die in an Isaac run on a way that at least has some thrills, chills, and maybe even some spills along the way. Um, so I'm I'm a okay with this, to be honest with you. I'm not compelled to make a streak work. I'm just compelled to enjoy myself. And I gotta tell you, I'm enjoying myself a great deal. You know what? Well, that sounds weird. I apologize for that, but Necronomicon, Book of Sin. I think Book of Sin is probably better for us. Necronomicon also has advantages, don't get me wrong. But, um... Small Rock, please. I gotta tell ya, um... You know, Caden and I, we've been dropping hints at it for a while. A free item in a crawl space? Is it my birthday? Is it is it the one day a year this happens? And Lil Loki! It's absolutely no impact on the run whatsoever, but it's the thought that counts, I suppose. It's like getting a gift certificate to, you know, HMV. Do they even still have HMVs? I don't know, but thanks, Grandma. You know I liked CDs when I was 14. I'm happy you remembered. Um, but yeah, we've been moving. You know, it's it's only 1.30 p.m. here. I, I like a nice casual move, and, and we're lucky that we have the means to do so. You know, we don't have to... It is not a situation where, like, hey, your lease expires on the 31st, and you gotta move in on the 1st. I've done, I don't know, half a dozen of those moves in my life, and... I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? There's, there's pluses and minuses. The plus is, you don't end up, you know, doubling up on rent, um, which is obviously expensive. But the downside is that you have, like, two weeks of just... Maybe not non-stop stress, but extreme annoyance. Let's put it that way. We're doing it a little bit more casually. Did a couple of hours of moving earlier today. Uh, you know, load up the caddy. Shove some boxes in. Drive across town. Unload them. Go uh, get some lunch. Rinse, repeat a couple of times, you know? It's, uh... So it's been good, but it did remind me, you know? I, 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 I have not lost sight of the fact... Hold on, what? It was magic fingers, okay. <laughs> I I was talking over myself, so I don't remember um, what item was in the item room. But then when I thought about it for a second, I was like, I got it. Um, what was I going to say? Hey, don't do that. Don't die to Monstro, that's just an embarrassment. Um, I'm lucky that while moving heavy boxes, and some of these boxes were heavy as all get out, you know what I mean? Like, I was, uh, I gotta admit, you know, I've known the move has been coming for a while, and I've been, when I'm in the gym, I've been thinking about, you know, some guys, I think when they work out, they think of, like, rippling six-pack and, like, a strong chest and stuff like that. That's all well and good, but I was like, man, I'm gonna lift so many boxes. I'm gonna make so few trips. <laughs> That, that was the practical implication. It's, again, it's the boomer reason to, to get in shape, right? This is an interesting one. What do you think about that, Zach? I don't know. But um, what I was going to say is uh, I'm lucky that I can be a tourist in the world of moving. I think I'm being straight up. I don't know. I'd have to reconsider. I mean, there's obviously, if you want to get comical, there's like worse jobs. But for me... On a personal level, the job that I think would annoy me the most would be become being a professional mover. Um, you know, first thing, you're lifting heavy stuff. It might surprise you, but I think that's like the best part of the job, right? Is that you're just... I didn't really mean to use the thing here, but that's okay. That's the best part of the job, right? Is that you're you're lifting... That was the best part of the job for me. Again, I'm not saying I'm super strong, but at least, like, you're getting a workout while also uh, you're, you're 
doing your job. So you're kind of like doubling up there. Mind you, of course, like, you know, you're not... I wouldn't call it the safest or most enjoyable way to get a workout, but still. Um, I'm going to Black Rune Eve's Mascara. I just don't trust it. Take a luck upgrade in shot speed instead. Ooh la la. Now, I want to be clear. Well, if I had known those were there, that would have changed things up a little. But I, I do want to be clear. Let me caffeinate here. It's a two coffee sort of day. I'm not suggesting that, you know, when you are a mover, you're like, oh boy, I get to lift 10 couches today. What I'm suggesting is that in a job with where huge pluses are probably hard to come by, that's at least one. You know, is that you're getting strong while at work. But I think everything else associated with the job is, it, it would drive me to insanity, I think. You're constantly uh, having to ask other people where to put really heavy stuff, and they might not always know. Doesn't that sound frustrating? Hey, where should I put your TV? Well, we were thinking we would put it against the north edge wall because the feng shui would be better. But what do you think? Perhaps you'd like to, lady! <laughs> It's a 68 inch picture tube from 1997. This thing weighs like 1400 pounds. That sounds annoying. Plus, there's so many other annoyances attached to it that I think you don't consider. Like here's one, especially if you're a mover in the city, you're driving a big truck. Hold on, I wanna see what we got here. N uh, this might be controversial because mom's bottle of pills is not very good, but neither of these items do anything for us. So I think, well, we get a small damage bonus now and then. I think we'd be better off trying this, and it this is way better. Okay, sure. Um, we'll go back for the other per throw. So, like, you're, you're loading, it, the moving job is like many stages, right? Stage one, you, you go to the place to begin with. Yo, a crawl space? What is happening on this run? Um, you go to the place to begin with, you know, hopefully they've packed up all their stuff, but there might be occasions where they've not. Um, mm, you know what, that's probably just good enough to roll with, to be honest. Um, so you pack up all their stuff, they're like, hey, by the way, uh, don't break them. You know, it's awkward to have movers in your house as well, because I, you have to watch the movers. But I don't... I'm not watching the movers. And we, we have not even con contacted movers for our stuff yet. We've just been moving it solo. But inevitably for some of our heavier furniture, I guess we will. Um, but I'm not watching to be like, Hey, are you going to steal my couch? I'm watching to be like, you know, if you need me to help you out somehow. Probably not with lifting, but at least with being like, Oh, you can take the side door. It's got way more clearance. That's what I'm there for, right? It's like a consultant. But you always feel, or I think, I don't know, I always feel at least, like the movers are like, wow, look at this guy. First off, he's watching us all the time because he thinks we're going to steal his stuff. Don't flatter yourself, buddy. Secondly, we're lifting all his heavy stuff and he's just standing there looking at his phone. Well, you know, you're not wrong. But that is why, I mean, you hired the movers in the first place, I guess, is so that you don't have to lift it. Anyway. So that's, and then you load it up, and you got it in a truck, and you're driving this huge truck down these tiny city streets. You're going to the person's uh, new house, and you're like, hey, is there like a parking spot or a loading zone? And they're like, oh god, no. <laughs> Have you seen rent in this city? There's absolutely no place to park. So just park illegally, and then, then you gotta unload the stuff, and you know, pack it into probably like a tiny elevator, and get it up to the next day. It sucks, dude. And by the way, I'm speaking from just the literal smallest amount of experience possible. Um, this is not just conjecture. I, I worked as a mover for one day. I've told the story a few times, but in my first summer away from college, or like the summer vacation between my first and second year of college, I was having a lot of trouble finding a summer job. I was in this weird boat, and I know that you know, it might sound silly, but like I was overqualified for a lot of the jobs that I was applying for. I think I've been hit, so please just let me out. Um, but underqualified for jobs that would be like awesome summer jobs for a college student. You know, like some of my friends had like um, basically summer jobs through the university where they would get... Uh, 
a grant for the summer to pursue some sort of research, you know? I wasn't really at that level in my first year of university, having finished basically... I mean, the first year of a biology degree in Canada is basically like high school too, so... You're not really coming up with that many interesting ideas, you know? But either way... Um... I ended up... Uh... You know... Doing some aptitude tests at a temp agency. So temp agency, if you're not familiar, is it, it's a very sort of 90s uh, policy, but I think it's still around. Um, the idea is, you're basically like a freelance, like, mercenary worker. Don't hit me, please. This is a scary room. I don't really want to create um, any turrets if I can avoid it. He's gonna spin! He's spinning! Okay, you made it, you made it. <laughs> Still think we're happier with the... With what we got here. Um, and, and then... You know, in my idiocy, I was like, maybe... I'll get to temp at a, a company, like an office or something like that. Offices are always hiring temp workers. And instead, like, every day they would call me at like 5.30 a.m. And be like, Hey, we got a position at the... What, what's going on here? <laughs> I think I will take it though. They're like, well, we got a position uh, at the movers today. If you want to do it, you know, be at whatever street at, by like 7 a.m. And uh, I did, admittedly, I said no a couple times. And then I was like, you know what? Like, I need the money. Um, I'll give it a shot. And it was, it's just a, it's a hard job, dude. And I hope this doesn't come across as like, you know, wow, what a crappy job. Why would anyone choose to do that? Like, I'm aware of the factors that lead to someone taking a job as a mover. And having worked as the mover for even just a single day, I am like, I am forever grateful and indebted to movers whenever we use them ourselves. We always tip, like, extremely well. I'm not trying to brag, I'm just saying because I've been there. For a day. Admittedly only a day, but it it left a lasting impression on me. I'll never forget, like, I worked with this guy, well, for the day, again, who was... I mean, he was a, a, an extremely large man, which is like, you know, if you're strong, I'm sure it's an asset in that industry, right? He was also the guy who drove the truck, so he must have needed some sort of certification for that, I'm sure. But anyway... Um, we went to the place where we were supposed to be moving, like, the origin point for the move. And I remember their kitchen for... This is very rare, but their kitchen was on the second floor of their house. And the dude literally... I mean, I was just on box duty, because I was like... You know, I was a temp. I didn't know what I was doing. Plus, I was like... I mean, I was 5'10", like, 150 pounds, and a first-year college student, you know? I was, I'm not saying I was extremely weak. I almost got killed there by being a, the world's biggest dummy. Um, going back to see if the pills are valuable. Yeah, nice try. Um, so I was just on like, hey, uh, can you carry the dishes? Yeah, sure, I'll carry the dishes. No offense taken at all. Anyway, he went up to the second floor. He and his, uh, you know, longtime work partner, at least the way that it seemed. And he just took like one of those, uh, those canvas belts. You know, that you might use to, like, secure a, a heavy piece of furniture in the back of a truck. Um, and he... Oh, Tinted Rock. Not gonna hear me say that too much. Um, he wrapped it around the refrigerator and his own back. And then just stood up and walked it down the freaking stairs. Now, I looked it up. The average weight of a refrigerator is, like, 300 pounds. So, they... You know, this we're not quite in world's strongest man territory, but it's really, really impressive. <laughs> he basically was wearing a 300-pound weighted vest, except it's even more unwieldy because the majority of the weight was just centered on his back. Um, and then he walked down a flight of stairs and, like, walked it all the way out to the truck, and then he, he and the other guy loaded it into the truck. You know, the more traditional way. Just, just absolutely an incredible feat. I am so lucky there. I need stats, dude. That's, it, honestly, Ma the Void at least is a damage upgrade. Lord of the Pit is speed. I can live with that. We need stats on this one, though. 
So I like, for real, I am, I am insanely impressed with movers in just about every circumstance. That is, I, I think, um, you know, I, I'm actually, in my opinion at least, I'm a pretty resilient individual. You know, I, I think, I, I have a really important uh, trait when it comes to feeling like you're leading a fulfilled life, which is that mundane tasks bring me pleasure. Like repeating the same task over and over, almost to the point of absurdity, um, it, it calms my sp my spirit it calms my soul so sometimes i'm like you know when i exit uh you know the entertainment industry if we're going to use the most uh, hoity-toity word for me sitting in my office uh talking to myself for hours and hours every day um i think you know i would like to work i'd like to put my uh limited coding experience to work ideally but also i was like dude if i end up like you know doing a more mundane job like i think i could be an okay landscaper or something like that you know I feel like I, or I, I, the one i always come back to even though I, I think i talked about it recently and i have no experience in baking is like i think i'd be a pretty good baker dude now, I, I'm not saying I would bake good bread. I'm not saying I would make stuff this tasty, which is probably the more traditional indicator of what makes a good baker. But I think I would. they would be like, man, that guy's really pumped out a lot of loaves today. And I'd be like, you know it. By the way, did anybody buy them? No? All right, we'll try again tomorrow, brother. But, you know, if you're if you're watching this and you're a mover... First off, be honest with me. How strong are you? How much could you deadlift? I know it's all functional strength, but if you had to approximate. You got a 400-pound deadlift? 500-pound deadlift? I'd love to know. Um, secondarily, you have my utmost respect. That's that's a job where if I was forced into the situation where I had to do it, I don't know. I would, I, I would try to pivot as soon as possible. Let's, let's put it that way. Blank card is, is so close to being good enough. It might even be good enough, but... Okay, stopwatch is awesome. I think we might make it work here. I think it's an interesting question, you know? As long as you separate the value judgment there. Because, like, you know... it There's a very slim but deliberate difference between what's the worst job on planet Earth and what's a job that, well, they, like, what's your least ideal job? What job would you be the least happy in? That you can think of, at least. You know, one is like, what kind of idiot would ever find themselves taking that job? The other one is like, just for my personality, this is really bad. Like, I'll tell you. I would rather, um, I would rather work retail for the rest of my life than move. You might be saying, NL, you've never worked retail. Uh, technically true. I worked uh, I worked at Goodwill, uh, like, unloading people's donations and also sorting through the garbage that they donated. I don't want that to seem like a value judgment. It's not like they donated stuff that was not nice, and thus I call it garbage. People sometimes literally just dropped off bags of garbage at the Goodwill. In case you're looking for another... Uh, reason to be a little misanthropic today <laughs> that that happened more than once in like the eight weeks i worked there um and it, you know i i had my fair share of dumb customer interactions even though i worked in the back of house I mean, we gotta take them are we going to take... I think we should probably take experimental treatment. What's it going to do? Take our HP away? Raised our rate of fire, but gave us more damage. Not that bad. I understand the soul-crushing nature. I think I would... I mean, isn't being a mover... Don't hit me! <laughs> isn't being a mover kind of like working retail as well? Except instead of having an endless deluge of customers... Uh, you you only deal with like one customer per day instead and if that customer is awesome you're like wow it's not that bad of a day if your customer's horrible you're like oh my god I gotta I gotta deal with this piece of garbage all day 
I'm not saying have sympathy for me. My job is great, and uh, I've I've worked really hard to not lose sight of that. And uh, as mentioned all the other, in every other video, I'm not like other YouTubers. I'm a cool YouTuber, but I think a lot of other YouTubers lose sight of the fact that. You know, the job that they're doing, most of the time, is a privilege. That comes with some negatives, but no job on Earth is 100% perfect. Um, and, you know, people would people would do some bad stuff. I'm not saying they would murder a person to take my job. I hope not, at least. But they might, like, you know, kind of glance somebody with the side of their car or something like that. And then be like, oh my god, I can't believe I did that. But it was worth it. Now, in what kind of mystical world would hitting someone with your car get you a job as a YouTuber? I don't know. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, my job rules. <gasps> it's like that, you know, Aziz Sanzari joke. I know, okay? But that Aziz Sanzari joke, where he's like, you know... Talking about how hard it is to be a stand-up comedian. And then he's like, I'm just kidding. I take naps all day. And I'm like, yeah, man. I mean, I don't, but I could. It's kind of the same thing. I mean, he doesn't either. You know, I'm sure. I'm just saying. I'm not looking for sympathy for the one day I worked as a mover. I just t I tell the story not even as a cautionary tale. It more as just like, you know, have some respect for your movers if you don't already. You, you, you should, to begin with. That's why, like, Kate and I... If they, you know, I think w wherever you worked... If you worked, like, a, a crappy job, or a job that you didn't like, at least, to avoid being, like, you know, giving you a universal, you know, condemnation. Um, I think that... Uh, that makes you more sensitive to people who do that job for the rest of your life. I've never worked retail, but I've also, like... I don't cause a scene at retail ever. I've never died. I would be so embarrassed to be the person who's like, can I speak to your manager? I would rather die. Um, same at like a restaurant, you know? I, I, We've never been, in, to the best of my knowledge, nightmare retail customers, nightmare restaurant customers, etc., etc. I just, you know. That's one that I think you just, if, if you were taught right <laughs> as, a, as a youngster, you'd, you know, or you figured it out as an adult, you know, you should just behave like that. But I think everybody's got a soft spot for, like, one job. Oh, dude, we're, we got Guppy. That's fantastic. Um, for me, it's movers. Like, when we, uh, oh, there was a tinted rock there, dude. When we had, um, when we moved to this place, like, the place I'm currently recording in, which we've been in for, like, five years... When the movers came by, they were like, why did you even hire us? Like, we had them move, like, six pieces of furniture that were all relatively small. They are like, don't you have any boxes? And we're like, nah, dude, we move those all ourselves. You know, I'm not, we're not hiring movers to, to move all our stuff. I'm, we're hiring movers so that, you know, we don't have to lift this 240-pound sofa down seven flights of stairs. I don't want to, you know, make you guys do any more than is strictly necessary. I will say, Kate watched a video, and I, I kibitzed a little bit, um, about this moving company in Japan that actually is like, it seems like a dream. They, uh, and I don't remember the name of the company, but I know, like, instead of, like, moving all being done on one day it's kind of like it's a multi-day process like a few weeks before your move they come to your house and they have a team of like you know five or six i'm sure it depends on the size of the the place but um they basically they take photos of your apartment um they they make diagrams of like where everything was in the apartment they'll open your medicine cabinet and be like okay this goes here this goes here this goes here they'll open your drawers and be like this is the order this stuff was in in your drawers etc etc i'm sure if that bothered you you could tell them not to as well but um then on moving day they have like all these special boxes you know they've got a special box for dishes special box for clothes special box for you know appliances bathroom stuff etc etc um, they come and pack all of your stuff for you. Uh, they take uh, they take it away in their trucks, 
And then, like, you know, that day or the next day... Don't hit me, please. Thank you. They drop it off. Reassemble absolutely everything. Yo, this run is so good, dude. And then even unpack the boxes and put the stuff back where you wanted it. Where you had it in the first place. So essentially, all you do... Well, this is a new room by my standards, I think. Essentially, all you do is... Uh, I mean, you pay for it, obviously. But all you do is meet with them first and be like, Yeah, these are like the dimensions of the new place. And this is all the stuff that's gonna be packed. Now, it wasn't cheap. I remember... The video that we watched, it was like a, a young couple, they were moving from like a, a two-bedroom apartment to another two-bedroom apartment. And they said the whole process was like 1500 bucks, something like that, I think. That's not, I mean, that's way more expensive than hiring a couple of movers. Or, you know, three or four movers even. For, uh, you know, the, the two or three hours that it might require, depending on how much stuff you got and where you live. But... Is also like such an enormous part of the the moving process is just handled for you. Is a very tempting offer. Let me put it that way. It isn't the way we're used to moving in North America. The idea that somebody else would pack up all of your stuff for you it feels very weird it feels like a like a betrayal like you're not doing your part but at the same time i'm like dude that would own <laughs> but we have the next best thing kate and i specifically kate uh she's not much of a lifter but she loves packing unpacking and organizing i have literally no appetite for that stuff whatsoever um but I don't mind and am capable of lifting some heavy objects for, you know, somewhat extended periods of time. Uh, so we gotta, we gotta, for as far as two individuals go, we've got a good cross-section of moving skills. We'd much, it, much better this way than have two dummies like me who are like, mm, me lift box. Hey, where should this go? Mmm. <laughs> me need nap. You know, I don't know. And of course, if you didn't have somebody lifting the box, you'd have to hire some movers or get some friends. I don't know. Here's a, sometimes people have asked us, you know, why don't you just get your friends to help you move? There's a couple of reasons. One is, um, we don't have that many friends. <laughs> and it's not like a, it's not a Pepe hands. It's not a Pepe hands. You know, I'm just like... We're, we're, we're just like kind of I don't, I'm trying to think about how to phrase this We have friends that we see once every four months once every three months something like that And you know, I consider those to be like close friends apart from that. I'm a, I'm a real homebody I don't like to leave the house too much and when I'm out of the house for even like an hour and ten minutes I'm just thinking about what I'm gonna do when I get back. I like it this way So the first reason is there's not really that much extra labor The second reason is I don't want my friends to ask me for help when they move I think when you move you're taking on the burden yourself Whenever possible you should do it yourself You know, it, of course I understand that that's maybe not a popular opinion But anyway I'm content to take on the burden for myself And I'd rather not be asked by other people as well Treat others the golden rule Anyway, for now, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It's a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. See ya!